Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, my name is Kurt, aka the Vitruvian Gamer, and... Well, I'm a little bit nervous, folks, because I'm going to do a new playthrough. Now, before I start, uh, this is going to be a playthrough with major spoilers, because this is a campaign game. I'm going to play through the Tainted Grail, the Fall of Avalon game by Awaken Realms. So, this is a, a story-based game. Uh, this game comes with this huge exploration journal with the stories that you are going to uh, create uh, with the adventures that you are going through. These are all spoilers. I will be showing these. I will be uh, talking about these. So this is a huge spoiler. Now this game should be replayable a little bit because you will know how the world would look like and everything but you might take different paths and all that stuff uh, make the different decisions play with other characters but still <laughs> in the end this is a campaign game and there will be a bunch of spoilers now you're warned that being said as i said i'm very nervous about this because this is a big game i haven't played this yet so this is for me new i've played the tutorial because the game comes with a tutorial i've played that uh two times now uh to get familiar with the combat and the diplomacy um, system with how energy works a little bit but there are so many other things that i can still discover in this game uh which makes me a little bit anxious but i hope this will be a cool one so this episode will mostly be an introduction because i will talk more about what i'm doing about the rules about how the game works in future episodes i will probably talk less and less about the rules and more and more about gameplay hopefully okay so um there is a story to all this and um, let me see if i can find my paper that I'm looking for. So the story will start with, uh, well, let's see what it will start with. Maybe I should read that part of the rule book first. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Okay, so you can also pause your screen and then go continue. This is the piece of text that I'm going to read for you. So, this island was never meant for humans. Looming on the border between our reality and the ancient power known as the Weirdness, it was populated by a mysterious legendary race. Humans came here anyway, with their wooden ships, their ambitious king and his fellowship of knights. Running from a plague, ravaging their distant homeland, they took the island piece by piece, raising men years of foreboding, shape and mysterious purpose. The former masters of the island faded into legend. 400 years later, not even their name remains. The people of Avalon called them the Four Dwellers. Time are, times are harsh. The Red Dead is back. The Menhirs are dying. And without their power, the land itself crumbles back into weird, the weirdness. That's why your hometown has gathered five of its strongest and wisest heroes and sent them to help in distant Camelot. As these champions set out to brave the danger of this wild land, you watch from afar because you are not one of them. So, as you already might have heard, there are some things that are connected to the King Archer legend. So we are in Avalon, we have this story about a knight or a king with his knights, we have... Uh, but it is all a little bit mixed with these strange things that are happening here. Also, the intro mentions many years, which is a big important part of this game. This big statue here, that's a man here. And that protects the land or us from the weirdness, whatever that may be. Uh, but they're dying, so there's a timer. Now, I've placed a die there with an eight. Uh, it uses these coins, I will show them later, uh, but they are not the most readable coins. It, it acts as a timer, 
uh, but I'm going to for now use the die. I will see how it works uh, during the gameplay. So that's the intro. So what happens first is I've chosen a character. So I will be playing. Uh, I hope I pronounce her. Ah, well, I can pronounce the right way because it's my choice. Uh, so Ailey, I'm playing Ailey, uh, who is uh, this lady here. We have her miniature right over here, and she has found a letter to her. So again, I will show you the letter here. You can pause your screen if you want to read it for yourself. Uh, but besides that, I'm going to read it for you. So it says, My dearest apprentice, how I regret what little time we had for your education. I was forced to leave town before I could pass on even a fraction of the knowledge you deserve. Though the fact you'd rather spend time in the meadows than in the temple certainly did not help. Know this, the sagas of old are true. Our island once belonged to twisted immortal powers. Avalon was not created for humans. But Archer, the first of the kings who landed on these shores with our people, subdued this realm inch by inch. He took the grail from the four dwellers and used it to bring seasons and cycles known from our world to this godless place. We all thought the menhir in our village was raised to immortalize this. The truth is, it was created to keep these ancient powers out, anchoring the island to the world of mankind. Now the menhirs go dark and we will soon follow them into oblivion. Thus, Lord Yvain secretly gathered the five strongest and wisest champions, including me. He leads us east to seek help in Camelot before it's too late before the land fragments and sinks into the weirdness. If we do not return or send word in 30 days, it means we have failed and the fate of Quanat or Quanacht falls to you. Yvain taught you to unstable to go with us and my runes foretold you would not return alive if you did. But alone you might stand a chance. Save our people or if you cannot, try to save yourself. And always remember, to me, you were the daughter I could never have. Stay safe, signed Nianti, priestess of Kuanacht. All right, so that's a letter that I received. So apparently they sent five champions to Camelot, but time has passed. They didn't return, uh, so there are problems still going on. I'm not a hero. I've been learned some stuff, but not... Mm. All that I should learn. All right, so that's it. Uh, all these cards that you can see, and you see a bunch of decks of cards over here. We have player aids here. Uh, we have uh, our starting uh, starting area. The cards. These are locations, uh, dice, and all that jazz. I will talk about them when <laughs> the time is uh, there to talk about. So, first we start in our hometown, which is, as you might already have heard, Kuanacht. This is the Kuanacht farmhold. Uh, and there, and I'm going to take this off for now. So this is how one of these cards look like. So, as you can see, there are a bunch of things here. The name, of course, the card number or the location number. We can have dreams here. This is a settlement that's uh, inhabited. It's friendly to us. It's our hometown. And there is a men here here that we can activate. Well, it is already active at the start of the game. It's active for eight more days. Okay, what else do we have here? We have some uh, flavor text. We have the arrows here showing which cards are connected, which location cards are connected to it. So that's the ones we have here. And we might also have other things on the card. And as you can see, if it will focus, let's zoom in a little bit more. There we go. We can spend energy to do some ch uh, chores for the townsfolk, which gives us one reputation. Okay, that's something we can do. We can also explore this uh, area if we want to. Now, let's just take, uh, let's see, one of these cards here. This is an overview card of a turn but this is what we can do as action so as you can see we can explore then we flip the location card and well we see what happens we can travel we can 
do a location action, the chores in this case, in uh, our hometown, we can inspect a min here. So if there's a location, we can inspect the min here and maybe we can try to activate it if necessary. We can do character uh, uh, actions, secret actions, item actions. For example, I'm going to take this out now. We have our own hero here, Haley. She has a healing herbs action, costs two energy to reduce one wound, which is pretty cool. Now, she also is traumatized. So every character that you can choose, you can choose from four characters. I have five because I have the promo uh, character Neom, uh, which I was almost considering playing with, but I decided to go with Ailey in the end. She's traumatized. She cannot reduce horror when resting in a location without an active man here. So I can only cure or heal horror if I'm resting in a location where there is a man here and it has to be active as well. So there we go. So that's something we could do as an action, the character, character action. And we can pause, that will end our day. And that, uh, well, has some other things going on with it. So let's get this party started. And, and I'm still considering how I'm going to do this. So I found, so most things, so as I said, if you explore an an area or a location, you flip the card and read it. Now, it's not always easy, especially with a camera, with a microphone, uh, with big cards. <laughs> These are big cards and it's quite far away for me uh, to take everything off, flip the card, read it, flip it back. So there are two options. For every location, there is also the text on the back of the cards is also in this book. So I could use this book as well to read to you but I found a, uh, a third option uh, which is an unofficial app that I could use uh, where I could just enter for the example this one the locations number there we go and well that gives me a text so I hope this works so I'm going to do a little test here. Uh, and go to this page in the book right next to me, out of sight. And yeah, I think this will be the text that I read when I explore this uh, card. So that is pretty cool. So I think, and I'm sorry, I moved the camera. Um, so yeah. Explore cost me one, uh, one energy. And now let's take a closer look to our player board before we start. As I said, this is quite of an introductionary video here. Uh, the big action will follow later, I guess, but we'll see how far we will get uh, this time. So this is my character board. It has a bunch of things going on, as I already mentioned, her action, her, her weakness as well. Uh, we have some stuff that we can gather. Uh, we have food and we depict out by these standard cubes here, these red cubes, each one is one food. So we started with three food that was on the back of the, her card here. It says a little bit more, Ailey is an outcast whose entire family perished in the weirdness. She makes a modest living supplying healing herbs and roots for the locals. She had the starting resources, three food and one reputation also gave my starting skills here uh, and that's the next thing so we have as i already mentioned food which is pretty important to have of course uh, we could have wealth which we didn't start with we have some reputation that we started with we can gain some experience which allows us to raise some um, stats to get some skills to get better cards and all that stuff and we can get magic that helps us as well then we have some stats here. We have aggression, courage, practicality, empathy, caution, and spirituality. And actually these are three groups of skills. So these two, the middle two and the bottom two, they are actually a little bit connected, uh, especially when raising a skill with your experience. Now, as you can see, I start with one courage, one practicality, two empathy, one caution, and no spirituality. Wow. 
that's a very did, did I start? Yeah, it's it's correct. So I don't have any spirituality. I don't have any courage, aggression. Uh, so we'll have to do with what we have. And then we have these three tracks here as well. So we have an energy track, and our starting energy is six with this uh, the chevrons here is seven. That's right over here. We have a starting horror or terror of zero. Of course, nothing happened yet. <laughs> And we have our hell track and this is a special thing here this is this t-shaped uh marker why is that so it starts at seven but your energy can never go above this line here while if your terror goes over that line then you are in trouble you might go insane so that's not what we want so that's our character that shows us what happens now you might already have noticed as well that I have this playmat here underneath everything that's a playmat of Lord of the Rings uh, so don't look at the names too much I just thought it suited a little bit I think you could get a place a game mat for this game I didn't uh, it's, it was already expensive enough as it is so uh, I think we have talked quite a bit all the other things we will see so why not just go well we're we're here right so why not just take advantage of that and do the explore action I'm not sure if I want that reputation for now uh, we already have one reputation which might help us in the future um, so I don't think I'm going to do some short <laughs> course for the townsfolk maybe we can do that if we have some energy left and we don't know how to spend it but first let's see what's going on in our own little ho hometown so i pay one energy as depicted on our over sheet, uh, uh, overview card here the turn overview uh action overview i mean we can do explore which means flip your location card read the text on the other side and resolve any rules this text will often refer you to the exploration journal of the location to make further choices so what i will do is uh, to make things easier and, and maybe and to test it i'm going to take that app i have typed in the number already and this is what i got from the app All right so you can pause it if you want and i will read it for you a deep feeling of loss fills everything in the kuanacht from dilapidated farms to the sunken eyes of those who remain in town the manure in the market is all but extinguished and everyone brave or resourceful enough has left to find a solution now it gives us some opportunities so if it says if you have the wind of weirdness status uh, remove this location card from the game and replace it with location 121 then explore this new location for free we don't right so we don't have the winds of weirdness we don't have anything yet now, if we have the secret card 66, we could go to verse 4. We don't. If we have the hunter's mark status, we go to verse 6. So, you see, depending on what's happened already, locations can have different things for you. So, it's very important. You might want to come back to certain spots because you have found something and you have other options there. But we don't. Otherwise, we choose one. We can either visit the families of the champions from the first expedition, uh, if you're to find him, them knowing more about them might help. Or we can ask the town folk, townsfolk to help you prepare. Might be interesting as well. And we can also rest for the day in your own home, which sounds a little bit time wasting, right? We can also wander the alleys twisted by the weirdness, we, but that is only possible if the menhir model is not in this location. It is, so we cannot do that. Or we can just leave and end the exploration. So what will I do? Will I help them to prepare me? Or do I want to know more about the people that I'm, well, trying to find? Uh, I could do both, right? Uh, which costs a little bit more time, but it might help me in the future. So I'm first going to visit the families of the champions. Now on this app, I can just enter my choice. So if you go to verse one in the book, it has a nice numbering, but we have the app. 
It says, This long winter, nearly everyone here lost a friend or family member. First to hunger, then to disease. Finally, the five remaining pillars of the community, the only heroes this land has ever known, suddenly left. Now, when you look into the distant eyes of the last remaining residents, you realize they want to forget. All right, so uh, we have some more options. We can loosen their tongues with meat. Uh, meat as in the drink. There is an old custom, a late night wake for those who wandered far from their home, holding it for everyone who left with the expedition won't be cheap though. I could pay one wealth or one food and go to verse two. So very important rule that I also already want to mention. There are two things. You can either uh, pay for something or lose something. If you have to pay something for an action or whatever, then you have to be able to pay it and do that before you can do it. Otherwise, it's not possible. So in, for this case, I could not choose to pay one wealth because I don't have wealth. I could pay, pay one food for this. Now, if it would have said lose one wealth to do this or that, then I could without even having to pay the wealth. All right, so that's one thing. I could uh, do that. Or I could ask them to share their burdens, which requires one uh, empathy. And that's my forte. I got two empathy. So that's something I could. Then I could go to verse 2, which eh, sounds pretty good for me. Third option, leave, go back to the start of this location and make another choice. Let's just ask to sh them to share their burdens. We we are empathic, right? That's our forte. Let's go with the flow. Let's go with what our character would most likely do. And it brings us to verse 2 and says, It takes a while to break the silence of the grief-stricken people. But when you, do, when you do, stories of separations and departures flood you like torrential rain. You try to remember every detail. The color of a palfrey horse the village uh, priestess Nianti wrote. The ornament on the hauberk that young Lord Yvain wore. The strange drinking horn Erfir the smith used to lug around. The birthmark of Fail, the master huntsman. The embroidered cape of Aubert, the seasoned traveler who had seen all parts of the island. Who knows what detail can help you down the road. So, I'm getting now, I get an, uh, a reward. I can say, as it says down here. Gain one part of the fate of the expedition status and the exploration ends. So this ends my exploration action. Now, I think, and I hope I'm right, <laughs> I, I hope I'm correct. We have this Tainted Grail save sheet. This will be useful for when I stop playing for today. Uh, but this also has statuses. So as the app told us, we get the, uh, let's see, what did we get again? The fate of the expedition. And that's right over here. So we can have part one. So we can cross off part one on this <laughs> and uh, eight part thing here. So it has eight steps. And it says when you have parts eight, one to eight of these stages, we can go to the book of stories first 405. We are a long way from there, but we did get something, some information about the five heroes that left the well our village as heroes okay so exploration ended okay so what to do do we want time is of the essence right we don't have unlimited energy uh we want to go where we want well need to be i'm not sure where we need to be we did get a map from a map maker a cartographer from i think it's about 100 years old or maybe more uh, this map so it gives us oops, an idea we're here where everything is and Camelot is right over here so we could try to travel over here uh, but there's so much more to explore now I think our main mission is going there if the map is still correct but there's a lot of things to explore in the nearby as well so that's something we have as a lead this map at the beginning of the game but mm, it's not uh, it's not all correct the map now we do have a bunch of spaces places where we can go we could go let's see if it's to the forlorn swords 
which has a bunch of it has a smith shop how interesting is that we can pay one wealth to draw a craftable item there or we can explore there's probably a lot of things to explore we don't have wealth so we cannot buy anything there to the west we have a warrior's fair where we can for a lot of energy for we can combat do a combat trial we lose some health but we can experience we can do that once each day all right or we can explore it we can also explore it then to the east we have the charred conclave now this has a special thing this has a lightning bolt which means if we go there as soon as we enter this location we have to draw an encounter card a gray one and that might be dangerous but oh who knows what we can find here and to the north pretty interesting of course is the hunter's grove where we can get food now we already have some food but if we manage to get some more food to get started to get on the road to have some reserve then this is a great place to go but if we do that we have to draw a green encounter which is a baddie right okay so that are our options so we could go in either of those four places but i'm still considering staying where we are paying that one more uh, energy to explore once more and to choose the other uh, option that we had because we could also ask the townsfolk to help us prepare and go to verse 3 of this thing here so that tells us though they have little left they share with you their last remaining supplies somehow this seems unworthy of a hero but since all of the true heroes were lost who will dare to question your methods it's true it doesn't sound really heroic that you're help asking for help of people who don't have a lot but might be the smartest thing to do if you have at least one reputation and you don't have the scrounger status so we're lucky we do have one reputation scrounger never heard of it so don't have that each party member so if there were more we could be a party but i'm alone i'm playing this solo i could have played this with more characters but i chose to do it solo we'll see how that works each party member gains two food all right so that means I add two of these red cubes to the food to my food spot and maybe hunting might not be that important anymore to go hunting there uh, then gain one random item and the scrounger status and the exploration ends okay so uh, scrounger status I have no idea where I have to write that down I assume I will just have to write it down on my save sheet and player notes um, I guess so yeah let's see on the other side oh yeah look at this status I have the I'm going to write it down here scrounger status so I've I'm a scrounger because I asked for help all right I scrounged <laughs> and I do get a random item so we have this big pile of items this is a big deck of item cards as you can see uh, I've shuffled this pretty well and uh, so I get to draw one and let's see what we get damn that's interesting okay we have a witch's bile huh. okay I'm not sure if that's going to be uh, useful soon uh, cannot make this to focus okay so it says in combat discard this item to gain three red cubes and receive one unavoidable wound okay so this can help us in battle to, uh, we can discard this to add three actually kind of damage you will see that when it happens so we have a witch's bile in our <laughs> in our backpack all right cool uh, i'm not sure that is that's what i wanted uh, that was what i was going for but hey that's okay we might want to want some weapons though but <sighs> problem is we could go here and maybe visit that smith which really really interests me to do 
on the other side hand um we don't have any wealth so i do wish i could get some wealth somewhere but where could we get some wealth i could choose to go to the chart conclave and fight that green gray encounter because we have let's check that one out we have four encounter decks here and they're uh they're dependent on which chapter you are oh i was talking about chapter i forgot i already forgot one thing folks oh boy and this is only round one so this was set up <laughs> so uh yeah so this was set up it gave us some clues which cards to use as well it also said you're ready to start at your third action of the game try exploring your starting location we, we did Remember to read the introduction of the exploration journal before you explore the first time. I'm not sure if we did that, uh, or did we? Did we read the... Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, okay, we have done that. Um, now discard this card and reveal the top card of the event. I forgot the event deck. <laughs> so this also told me how to prepare the event deck, by the way. But, oh boy, I forgot to draw the first card of the event deck, which is called Chapter 1, Part 1. Let's see. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I'm going to show this to you. You can pause your screen if you wish. I'm going to read it for you. It says, place this card on top of the active quest pile. The time is short. The guardian men here that has been protecting your hometown since the ancient days is about to go dark. Rumor has it that there's a secret druidic ritual that may help you rekindle the memories. You must explore the location surrounding Quanacht to find it. Quest, we have to earn a Menhir Rides secret card. To do so, you will have to explore the location surrounding Quanacht. It will succeed as soon as we have Menhir uh, Rides. Resolve the chapter 1 to 5, uh, 1 part 5 card from the event deck and this card is card. Okay, so as soon as I have the men here rights, then I resolve chapter 1, part 5 card from the event deck and discard this card. Remember not to change the structure of the rest of the deck. Hint, if this is your first game, try to return to Kuanacht at the end of this day and spend the night there to read the dream as dream often contains hints. So it's pretty important uh, to do this uh, right. So we put this card on top of the uh, event deck. So we have a quest. We need to find the uh, Menhir rights, and therefore we have to explore the surrounding areas. So I think because, well, we have these encounter decks. We have green, white, purple and blue. Green are mostly monsters that can give us food or whatever, or, or animals or whatever. Uh, gray are more humanoid uh, enemies. They give us items more. Or, often so maybe just maybe i can take the risk and go there it will be a first battle already but we might find something maybe get some wealth and then go to the fallen swords and to the smithy so i think i will do that i think i'm going to spend one more energy there we go and move here so as i already said the lightning bolt means, and let's show you a little bit closer. So where I am now, the lightning bolt right over there means that I have to do that immediately as soon as I enter that location. So I draw the top gray encounter. Now, this, since this is my first game, I have this special encounter card, your first encounter on top of the deck. The rest is shuffled at random. This is not a random card, although I haven't seen this yet. I've seen the green one in the tutorial that I played, but I have not seen this one yet. So this is already a surprise to me uh, as well. So what we'll do is we flip the card. And as you can see, this is an example of an encounter, right? So normally these green text with the arrows, they're not there in, with the other cards. Just for this one, it is. So we are, well, we found some misshaped vermin or mist-shaped vermin. Okay, so it has all these stats, all these things. I will explain while I'm going to, while, uh, well, <laughs> dealing with it, I guess. So I'm going to make some room. So when you get an encounter, always make some room uh, 
to play cards next to it. So I'm going to play. play I'm trying going to try to do this here. So I get some room to put some cubes because here we have the combat pool where we can. Well, here we have the cubes that will determine when we defeat it. And that's something I have to show you first. So this has four life points as it is. So we need to add four red cubes to the combat pool and then we defeat it. All right, so all the other things, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that later. So we get an encounter, a combat encounter. Now we have our own combat deck. These are 15 cards that are the basic combat cards especially for this character. So each character in the box has a different set of cards. You might already have seen some a pile of green cards, which is called the advancement pool. So later, if we have experience, we can get more cards into this or other cards, because it always has to be at least 15 cards. So what we do at start of a combat in a solo player game, we draw the top three cards of the deck. And that's what we can work with here for this round. So there is also, uh, let's see, uh, where is it? This overview card. So this will tell us how combat works. It's a lot of text, but it helps, especially the first time you play it. It's very interesting. So as I said, starting, um, starting the encounter, draw three cards from the combat deck. If you're with four characters, you only draw two and check the enemy traits. So enemies might have some traits. This one doesn't have any. But traits can influence the combat. Sometimes you get a surprise attack first because they're fast. Sometimes you get less cards. Sometimes you can only play a certain amount of cards and whatever. You, there are so much things going on. Then we pick the active character, which is very easy because we're the only one. And step three is the character activation. There are some steps that I'm going to skip for now because they're not there, but I will talk when some stuff happens. So I'm going to play one card from my hand and the first card that I play has not really has any rules to it. So that's pretty important. The first card I can play for free. Okay. And there are some, hmm, some interesting options here. So let me think about this and I'll be back. Okay. So first card, I don't have to look at anything. I can just play it and I play. So you can see they have symbols here left. And right, I just put these left symbols next to the other symbols on the right of the previous card, which is the, the rat here. And then we can see what happens. Uh, all the things that happen here. Uh, let's see if I'm doing this correct. Yes, this is our. This is going to according to plan. So what I'm going to look now is all these symbols here. If there are any one connected, so my uh, aggression, my courage, my practicality, then they don't connect with anything. Magic, that could connect, but only if I pay magic, <laughs> which I don't have. But this one, this bottom one, that's a free one. Doesn't matter, I that always activates. This time it will activate this action one time. Sadly enough, it doesn't have an action. So actually this card doesn't do it a lot. It does have an ability though here uh, with the uh, skull symbol, which means that happens when the enemy attacks us. Then I would choose the uh, enemy attack that he will take. So normally, he, depending on how many cubes we already placed on this enemy, if he attacks, he will de attack depending on how many cubes he has. In this case, if I would have this card when this on top, this, this card active when he attacks, I will get to choose which effect he chooses, except for the run away or the destroy the card. And then, uh, or except for the run away ability, uh, which this one uh, doesn't really have, except for the opportunity. Uh, so uh, that's it, but I'm not finishing yet. I'm still going to play a card now. Now, very important, in order to play another card, you need to play a card that connects this symbol, the card with the lightning bolt, to one of the skills that you have enough of. So for example, so the first thing that we did was hold guard, just to check the enemy. And now we are gathering our thoughts. We're, we're taking it slowly. There we go. 
And now we put it on top of the other card, again connecting the right symbols on the first on the previous card with the left of my new card. And this means that that thing here is gone. So we cannot choose that anymore. But now we do have a connecting lightning symbol right over here uh, with our practicality. So we are allowed to play this card. Again, we need to connect one of those symbols to a skill we have, otherwise it wouldn't work. We could also use magic to do this in this case. All right, and then again, not really good, but we have this free action here, which is a two times this action, which is again empty. I didn't draw the best starting hand. I'm also not sure if Ailey is the best fighter. So combat might not be a strongest point. So we might want to have weapons or whatever to help us. Now, this head card has an ability with a sand timer on it. If we have that, we place one of these sand timer tokens on here on the card. And at the beginning of my next activation, this will be removed and this action will uh, trigger. Okay, so that's that. Now, I still have one card in my hand. Uh, it won't be enough to kill, I'm not sure. I, I, I've, uh, let's see. Yeah, so this is what we'll, we'll do now. So we're not done yet. I'm going to play my last card in my hand, which is a surprise attack. I was holding ground, gathering some thoughts, and then strike. Now, that means I will place this card on top of the previous one. So also on top of the timed action, so the timer goes away, that will be ignored. Okay. Oh no, I cannot do this. I forgot, I forgot. Oh boy, that was silly. Oh boy, I cannot connect this because I don't have the lightning symbol here. I forgot about that. Oh, I missed that when I was planning this. So let's take back these actions and let's see if I can do something more interesting. This is a very difficult card to play because it doesn't have that symbol. So it's only good as the first card. So maybe let's take everything back. That's this is how we learn. This is the first episode. I promise next episodes this will be better. Maybe I just should. Uh, oh boy, this has not a lot of options to connect. Uh, what does he do with, if I attack him for one now, no, I will attack him for three. So let's do just, we just see the, the rat and we do a surprise attack. Okay, so this has some things. We do have one courage, so we do get to place one. Let's take some cubes here. We do get to place one cube in the combat pool. We also connect with practicality. We have one practicality, so we can place another cube. We have Magic, we could spend magic if we had to add another cube, but we don't, so we cannot do that. But we can, we can do this free one on the bottom, which adds another cube. So they, he's at three already, which is perfect. And this action here, this special ability of this card, allows us, when we play this card, to draw a card from the combat deck, which is pretty cool. So um, let's see if we can do something with this. Uh, Okay. Hmm. This is a mock retreat. This huh. we could uh, we cannot play it because we cannot connect it to something else. We can also not connect this one. So our turn is going to end, folks. So that's it. I'm I'm left with these three cards. There's nothing much that I can do. Uh, so now the enemy will activate. When the enemy activates, let's take that one. He will. We will see how many cubes we already placed on it and that's in this case it's three so we're going to go to three and then we see what he does now if we only placed zero one or two cubes he would wound us and we could get one well we, we, we would lower our health by one but in this case he has three so he only loses a cube so uh, our progress is thwarted a little bit he has two cubes left now but oh by the way um Let's see. Yeah, that was his attack, which is not that great. So perfect. He heals a little bit. And now we are going to go to the 
end of the turn where we have to discard down to three cards which we don't have to because we have three cards only and we draw a card as well let's hope if that's a good one we drew the careful attack sounds good we'll see if it works okay and that brings us to a new round in this and we keep playing on this but the first card again in this round this combat round is free so we don't have to connect one of those uh, special thingies okay let's see we need to do two damage how can we do that okay i think we can manage to defeat him so that careful attack is perfect because we we'll, let's place it here now it does not have to have the lightning symbol it also doesn't have the lightning symbol but it, because it doesn't connect but for my first card in a turn in a combat round it's not important so what do we get we could well do one damage with uh, courage uh, or aggression but we don't have aggression so we don't get to activate that but we do have our two times multiplier our free action here two times one wound means we place two of these cubes here again it has a ability when the uh, creature attacks we lose uh, he does he loses one less and we prevent a wound so a very defensive card which can be useful but before we do that uh, i think we're going to check yeah we're going to his attack but we see if he has a four uh, well, as you can see, if he has four, he's defeated. So that's his number. So we defeat this uh, vermin. So we remove the cubes and then we go and check the reward. So there is loot, as you can see. Now I was hoping to get something else as a creature, but we get one food as a reward. Uh, now, if there were multiple characters playing, then we would, and I'm going to remove this from game. This was for our first encounter only. So let's remove that. Um, I was hoping to get something else there, but we do get one foot, so uh, we zoom out a little bit there, so we can see our character again, and we place one more foot in this food slot. We get back our cards, our combat cards, and we are going to shuffle our entire combat deck again, and that was our first battle, folks. So sadly enough, not what I was hoping for, but still, we managed to do something, right? Okay. So let's continue with this location. Maybe that's the last thing we'll do this uh, this playthrough. So we are here at the Shard Conclave, which is location 104. There is no action available here, as you might see, no actions. So we can just explore if you wish, and that's what we'll do. So we'll, we'll lower our energy by one again, and I'm going to use the app here uh, to make it a little bit more easy, although I have the book right next to me. Um, yeah, but maybe you can still read. So we are at location 104. So I'm going to write that number in the app. Okay. So it doesn't take long to find it. You just have to follow your nose. The remnants of an enormous wicker man kneel at the bottom of a small veil. You were here when it was set alight years ago. The day was wet. The wicker man smoldered but didn't burn. His victims, dozens of tightly packed druids, are still inside, their melted faces and charred beards pressed against the bars and looking toward the grey silent skies. Barely audible, ceaseless whispers seems to fill the air. So it now says if you're playing maggot or, or is in your party, then we go to a certain verse, otherwise choose one. Stay a while and listen. Dig through the remains or leave while our sanity remains intact. So option number three might be a clue to what happens when we listen or when we dig through the remains, right? So we might get some terror here, which is not great for Ailey because she cannot heal um, terror that easy. But I think this time we're planning to rest at a Menhir's location, uh, so we'll see what resting does when that happens. Let's hope we can heal some, and it should be somewhere here resting. What when? What do we get when we rest? That might be interesting to know. Rest, yeah, we could. 
we could uh, eat some food to lower our terror. Okay, so what we would do? Are we going to listen to those whispers or are we going to dig to their remains? Oh, both sounds a little bit sacrilegious. Uh, we do. We only have two energy left, so uh, we can go exhausted. But exhausted is hmm. okay. I think I'm going to choose the option to go through their remains. It's a little bit sacrilegious, but I still hope to find something useful. Uh, although information can be very useful as well. We'll see what happens. So let's first dig through the remains. So. You hum a joyful song to drown out the whispers and get to work. Prying apart half-melted bodies is grim and foul work, but you do find some valuables that were locked away with unfortunate druids. If you don't have part one of the pillager status, gain one random non-companion item and part one of the pillager status. Okay. So, uh, first, that's what we do. So, if you don't have part one of the pillager status, we gain. So, I don't because <laughs> I started. So, it's again a status probably here on the sheet. Pillager, it has five parts. So, first of all, we get run random non companion item. So, let's draw another item. Uh, we'll, it's not a companion. So, we have a smoke bomb. We can, in combat, discard this item to escape without triggering an opportunity attack. Okay, this might save us if we <laughs> uh, encounter something we don't want to encounter. Alright, um, good. And now we also get uh, part one of the pillager status. So that's, we will write that down on our status paper. Pillager part one. Okay. That's cool that we have this to remember. Now, next step. Each party member who has more than one empathy gains one terror. Okay, so I have so much empathy that rummaging to these remains is not something I really like. I get a terror. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Okay, uh, good. And then exploration ends. That's it. So, okay, where go, where to now? Okay, we do have two, one energy left before we get exhausted. If we get exhausted, then we, well, then we only restore four uh, energy when resting, which is, hmm. We still might consider doing it, but I'm not sure. So we could go back. We could also listen to those whispers before going back home, uh, which would cost us one more action and then one more energy to get to back home and rest. Um, yeah. Okay, what will we do? We're there, right? So we might as well get as much as information. Yeah, let's see. We let's try to get as much information as we as we can. We are going to stay and listen to those sounds as well. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, you stand there for a while, pondering whether this massacre was justified. The druids were blamed for the return of the Red Dead, but without them the play kept on, while the menhirs weakened. The whispers in the wind become louder with every minute. There is still some form of life left in the burned out husks. You wonder what knowledge or madness they can bestow. So I could learn from the conclave, and then I have to pay one energy, or I can leave. So I'm getting exa exhausted anyway so let's just do it so i'm going to spend that one energy so now i'm exhausted <laughs> that's the case that's how it is and i go to verse 10 the lipless mouths sneer at you the melted fingers seem to beckon and call you an angry whisper growls uh, grows like the sound of the sea finally you realize they want you to come inside to step behind the shard bars where their black arms and melted fingers may close around you, into a place where your life should have ended with theirs. Okay, so we could go inside, 
which requires us to be maggot, which we are not, or have at least one spirituality, which we do not have. Or we can put our ears to the bar and gather what you can from there. So that's what we'll do. That's the other only option that we have besides leaving. But hey, let's listen. After a while, you learn to distinguish singular voices in the maddening cacophony of whispers. Several threaten you or throw curses for what your kin have done to the druids. Some cry out in agonizing pain. One describes a secret invocation and a forgotten ritual. So, if I have at least three magic, I could go to first seven. I have, all, I have no magic. Each party member gains one magic. So we have a first magic. That's cool. That might help us in the future, especially with the combat cards and stuff like that, if we don't can't con connect anything. But also, sadly enough, each member who has at least one empathy gains horror. So again, more horror or terror, which is sad. So that's... the. I, I was hoping this would be great. Maybe it is great for when doing diplomacy in the future. But for now, wow, this empathy is not helping us at all. And then exploration ends. So we only have one energy left. We're already exhausted, but we use our last energy to go back to our hometown. Okay. And that will end our day. And then we are going to go back to the order of the day card. So the end of the day, first thing we do is rest. So we can consume fuel food. If we consume food, then we restore um, to full uh, energy, except when we are exhausted, then we only restore four points. So that's what we will. Also, if we consume food, we restore one health and lose one terror. Now I'm full health, and so I could choose not to eat food. The thing is, when you don't eat food, your energy goes down to zero. So that means if you're restoring, you will always only restore four, up to, uh, to four. But since we're already doing that, I could choose not to eat food and do nothing, especially if my health is still very good. But I think I'm still going to use one food to get that terror down by one. Because that scares me, folks. That scares me very much. Okay, so that's what I did. I restore one, two, three, four energy. Sadly enough, only four. So that leaves us limited for the next day. Then we could advance our character by spending experience, which we didn't get yet. Even the killing a rat didn't work. And then... Next thing is modify your decks. That's also with experience. That will be for later in the game. But now, the very important thing. If you're in a location with the dream icon, read the dream. So, this... Uh, let's zoom in to show you. Oops. The other way. Zoom in. So, as you can see, this location here has this symbol here of the eye. That means there's a dream here. So, I'm going to sleep here and I'm going to have a dream. Which means I'm going to, well, have to... I'm not sure if the app has the dreams as well. So I'm going to check. I think it does. So I'm back at 101. And I could, on the app, press this dream button here. This uh, sleepy. And this is my dream. There we go. Again, the book has a sleep uh, dream section as well. Also... Uh, you might have nightmares as well. I think if you have a nightmare, I'm not sure what you do. I guess you put you you press the uh, the ghost symbol here. But for now, we have a dream, which says, "In your restless dream, a pale lady rises from the water. Her eyes milky and her skin spoiled with rot. She whispers something into your ear. Her breath smells of sea salt, kelp, and rotten fish. You barely remember the words. There was something about three enigmas." One hidden under the Isle of the Dead, one clutched in the grasp of a burn of burnt hands and arms, and one buried in a mist-covered mound. But what could it mean? Okay, and it has a hint. It says, hint. The dream refers to three of eight locations surrounding Kuanacht. It's possible some of them are not yet revealed. Okay, so we have some hints. So uh, there was something about... One hidden under the Isle of the Dead. One 
clutched in the grasp of burned hands and arms, and one buried in mist-covered mound. Okay, so what could that mean? So, as it says, the, it talks about three out of the eight surrounding locations, right? As you can see, we see four of them. We don't see these. Because we are here. Oh, and I forgot something very important, folks. Oh, you're probably shouting at me. So, when I came here, I also got to see these two cars. Oh, I completely forgot. Let's get those locations. Wow, I completely forgot that. So, when you enter a location, uh, there are might be arrows uh, on them pointing to more locations, other numbers, 107, 109 in this case, nothing in the east. So when that location, or these empty locations for now, are in contact with an active man here, which means this one here, uh, surrounding one of the eight spots, so we have the four that we already got, but now we have we have still four empty ones surrounding the manor, so they're the manure can show you eight cards, then we get to place them. Now, if this manure would have been here, I could not place this here. All right. So, what happens is we will place these cards. So, we have 107, the whitening, uh, where we have to draw a blue encounter and we can trade with the townsfolk to gain wealth. Oh, that might be interesting. Oh, cool. Gain wealth to go to the smithy. Okay, so that's something we can go to. And we have the Island Asylum, where we can do some healing rites. Pay wealth to gain three life, so we can heal there. Okay, so that's what we saw when we came there. Okay, so uh, in order to look at these ones, we have to be adjacent, horizontal or vertical to it. So if I go here, I can check out this card. If I go here, I can check both of them. Here, this one. So that's how it works. So for look, uh, getting new cards, it's adjacent orthogonally. In with the men here, the ones that we can reveal is in all eight directions. Okay. So that was the dream. So um, if we were going insane, we had to read the nightmare instead. And now we go to the next day where we go to stage one which is, uh, where is stage one? Start of the day. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do before I end this video. So in the start of the day, we would remove expired menus and all the locations that are out of range of a menu because that happening would disappear. Ha. And then we are going to remove time from the menu. So as I said, it has dials, so I could uh, show you this is one of these dials it has numbers on them up to eight so we would turn it so that the seven is in front but as you can see it's it doesn't show that great so that's why I took a die so we lower this one to seven and well, let's place it back here there we go it's still active but it's dying it's going oh it's not good now, if there were any cards with timers on them, with these time tokens, that we would remove them and maybe something would activate or, or stop doing something, of course. And then we would uh, reveal the next event card. But I'm not sure if we have to, because we had to put place this on top of the event card, right? Uh, oh, oh, on top of the active quest pile. Okay, so. I'm, not sure. I'm going to check if I have to uh, do the other thing, uh, the, if I have to draw a new event. I probably do, I guess. We'll see. Um, but I'm going to check. I'm going to end it here before I make any mistakes with the next event. So next time we will start with the new event card probably. And then we are going to, uh, well, do some more actions. So this was part one, folks. Part one of this playthrough. I know there's a lot of text. There's a lot of reading story and all that stuff uh, but I still hope you will enjoy it uh, I'm you have to be in it for the for the story more most of the time I guess of course the more we get 
around, the more encounters we will have, the more monsters and special encounters we will get. Now, um, I'm going to remove these cards here. Every other deck also have has your first encounter card, which is exactly the same. I just checked it to be certain. So we did get a green, uh, the uh, already gray one. But, oh, this is a different one. Right, oh yeah, I remember now. So the blue one we will keep because that will be our first uh, diplomacy encounter, spoiler. <laughs> Uh, but the other ones we will remove and next time we will get a new really random encounter. So that's it for this episode. There are some things I haven't talked about yet, but there will be a lot of more to talk about in future episodes. I hope you're liking this. I know there are more playthroughs already out there. Uh, I'm doing mine. I'm doing this my way uh, with the character that I've chosen, with the mistakes I will make, with the choices I will make. and. Uh, well, I'm hoping that you're here to enjoy the ride, to enjoy the adventure. And, uh, well, we will continue soon with part two. Thank you for watching this one. This was a long one because a lot of explanation is also about the setup. Next time we will probably play uh, through a couple of days, that's for sure. Thank you again, and I hope to see you next time. See you soon. Bye-bye.